All right, so the stack wagon's coming today. And that should be here pretty shortly. Pretty shortly. I mean, within the next half hour or so. Within the next half hour or so. Uh, yeah, it's uh, better late than never, I say. Uh, it's things are thawing out. It's like 50 degrees outside right now, and and uh, yeah, I wish it was here last week, but that's okay. You know, such is life. Uh, get to get to get it off the trailer today and get it in the shop here and figure out how it how it functions. I'm not sure which tractor I'm gonna throw it on. Probably throw it on the 4960. I don't know for now, anyway. Um, but everything is turning to mud. Mud, mud, muck and mud. And, uh, yeah, so I guess you'll see when it comes in. That's all. We'll see when it comes in. have to get moved out to grab two bales at a time. That's cool. It is cool. It is quite cool. Hopefully it uh, functions correctly right out of it. we got to make sure there's no dent or scratch on it first. <laughs> you the scratch and dent cool. Right? Yeah, make sure there's no scratch well, or dent. I don't know. I think this is supposed to settle down on that for transport. I don't see a stopper or anything. You know? I don't know. There's a book and there's a computer and there's all kinds of stuff. I hope they've got it set up correctly. You have to set it up? Yeah, well what I'm worried about is here. This seems awful loose to me. You know? All right. Because that thing comes around. It's run off of hydraulic motors, and then in the back, oh, here's the other wonderful function. See that that right back there? This is good for Joe. That's a pusher. So when this thing sets all the way up, see that plate there? Which one? This plate here. Okay. Okay, when this thing is set up, it's got all 12 bales on. It shoots through the top here oh, and pushes, pushes the bales off the back, off the spike. Ensuring that the thing is tight. Well, that I didn't know that. Yeah, I looked all over this thing and I didn't see that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They did not put my stickers on. Go go ahead and go to the complaint department. I'm going to call the. I'm going to file a complaint with the complaint department. Actually, that's your job. <laughs> Why do I have to be the complaint department? Because you're so good at it. I don't, I barely complain, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't say that you complain often, I just say you're good at complaining when you complain. You really are. So yeah. Um, My baby's awake. The bell spikes. And the bell spikes, these go on the front of the 8120. Make sure you didn't get any scratch first before we uh, 
get the acceptance of the product. What, like this? Where, where, here, where? Let me one? see, let me see. It looks like the sticker's not right. Yeah, right. It's coming off it. already. What the hell is that? Uh, it's called the bail claw. I think that's going to be an incredible addition to the bail stacking world. Because you can put three bales on that sucker. And it's close to the, it'll be real close to the uh, tractor. Right? What tractor are you using with this one? 8120 has a loader already. Yeah. Yeah. You just take the. I gotta. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting how I'm gonna build. The, I gotta make the mounts for the Western Bush because it's a different loader mount. It'll be. It'll be. It's It is. It's actually a honeybee, too. Killer don't, honeybee. Don't, don't kill the bears the bears down there. Bull bears down there. I called Tim. Go and get his ass home there. Okay. I didn't think bull bear worked on Mondays. Your theory is all to hell. I know. That thing's massive. Huh? Huh? <laughs> it is massive. Well, the, the wings need to be extended. Yeah, the wings. Folded down, the arms folded down the grip. So they grab two balls versus one. And then, how does it slide back? It yeah. pushes itself back. Oh, yeah, there's a paddle. Oh, oh, oh. Paddle. Your knees. It comes up and around. When this thing goes up, shove it. She did say that you will have to, you know, until it's polished up, you know, there's a... Uh, right, with the beam, uh, Well, it's on there already. Was it? Yeah, but I would I would coat it with the stuff the slip plate that we have yeah. because that stuff is more aggressive. It's not as slippery as the original slip plate. Today would be a good day to do it. All right, I gotta go get. Okay. <coughs> okay. 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 Right, Joe. Okay. All right. So here's here's what we're gonna do. We got this. Uh, the stack wagon showed up. Obviously, you're seeing this uh, after it got unloaded. Hopefully, Teresa videotaped pretty good. And uh, we've been, uh, I'm a little bit concerned, not disappointed in any way, but just a little bit concerned. And Joe's going to be coming here. But anyway, so here's a, here's a funny thing. Here's a funny, funny thing. If you look at these outlets here, one, two, three, four of them, um, they have these beautiful, beautiful little labels on them. This one says case drain. Uh, this one says pressure, this one says return, and this one says load sense, all right? So this is a pressure line, this is a pressure line, this is a return, and this is a drain. Now if you hook these three up and don't hook this one up, it blows up the valve body in the back. Don't do that. If you hook this one and this one backwards, you blow the valve body up in the back. Don't do that. Um, the funny thing is, these ends don't fit my tractor, any of my tractors. So, you can shut that off, Joe. It doesn't fit any of my tractors. So, I'm like, well, what the hell? I go to the book, and I'm thinking, well, I'll just change the ends, but th there's a reason why they've got these things, and I don't know anything about it. So, hmm. I called him up, or I sent him a text message, and she actually called me up, and she says, well, you do have power beyond on your tractor, right? And I says, well, yeah, there's the power, there's the, 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 the little outlet there, which I've always been told was a power beyond. I have it on two or three different tractors. I think it's on, I know it's on, the that outlet is on the, the 8530. I know it's on the 7530, and I, I think it's on the 8120 also. I'm not sure about that, but anyways, it doesn't even matter. And they're like, well... Take a picture and send it to us. And apparently, Power Beyond, yes, Power Beyond, which I don't have, but I've been told I've had. And even today, I talked to the deer dealer, and he's like, well, the Power Beyond is basically just another outlet that's on the side. And of course, Morris Industry says that I need a four point Power Beyond, which is something that they don't know about here at the deer dealership. He says, well, it should just be a pressure and a case drain. And I says, no, no, this has four things. 
He says, well, I'm going to have to research it and we'll get back to you and see what we can do. So I guess generally what the power beyond that we're used to or what they're used to on the East Coast is a pressure and a return or a case drain. A pressure, a return, and a case drain. But this other load sense thing isn't something that they know about. So, anyways, they're they're on it. So I'm a little bit concerned with that. I can't just hook this thing up and go. Uh, for the simple reason is because I don't have power beyond. I don't have a four point power beyond. And they told me don't hook it up, don't change anything, just get get what you need, and call us when you go to hook it up. Because if you do it wrong, you're going to blow the thing up. And I don't want to blow it up because it's expensive. And I'll show you what. He's talking about, when he says you'll blow the tops right out of these valves, he's talking about these seven valves right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He says you'll blow the tops right off of those things. He says, and they're $400 a piece. The tops are $400 a piece. So you don't really want to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, this, this makes me laugh because a friend of mine, Frank Kosius over here, he, uh, he says, fuck that. Fuck those electronic things. They they suck, you know. I'm starting to agree with them. <laughs> and, I mean, look at this thing. It's loaded. This is a sensor. This is a push-off for the big bale. Uh, when you set it, up, set it up, stack it up, this actually pushes the bales off, pushing you forward. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but And I also see that there's some... I think this is too loose. They're telling me it's it's not too loose, but I think it's too loose. I might be crazy or something, but I'm thinking that it's too loose, but I don't know yet. Uh, there is a weird hydraulic tensioning thing right there. See that thing? And I don't know if it does it. It's in the valve. There's a valve for that cylinder, you know that? So I think that that valve actually creates tension for those or that cylinder creates tension for the chains, but if the tension is too loose due to wear and other things, then it, there's an adjustment here. I know I saw it. Oh, I don't know. I've got a whole, I've got a whole uh, DVD I got to watch, which is interesting, just to say the least. But uh, for the most part, the uh, the machine is in good shape. It came the way it was supposed to. Uh, I'm actually going to put a, another coat of this graphite on here before we start to use it. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, what we do. So, <laughs> the thing that, that's going to make this stack wagon work better than the HD4SR is the ramp, the weight, or the, the, the ramp here, or the bed, is not nearly as steep as the HD4SR. This grabs two 3x4s. Those pipes are sucked in to, for transport, but when you go to the field, you just pull the bolts out, slide them out, put the new bolt, put the bolts in the right position, and you can grab two uh, two bales, two three by four bales, or I think three three by fours. I think it's two or three three by fours. I think it does three three by fours. It does quite a few. And then when when it uh, when you hit those bales on the front, there's a little sensor here. Yes, proximity sensor. So that comes down and tells it that there's a bale up against it, which triggers these things right here. Yeah, these things right here. These are the spikes or the, the grabbers that go into the side of the bale and hold it so that you can reopen the, uh, the, the, the grab arms and grab your second bale. And then when it goes to the top, you have this plate here. That's what these chains are for. This plate comes around, around the top, sticking into the bottom of the bale, and it pushes it all the way to the other end. Instead of it, um, yeah, instead of it having to slide from gravity, uh, there's a little bit of gravity at work there, but for the most part, it's being pushed all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. And then when it's at the bottom, it turns around, comes all the way back to the top, and at that time, the arm table comes down. You grab your next, your next bale. So life is good. Uh, we will see it in action. What's that, Joe? Oh, it was so loud. It was just a car. Look, Tim was coming down the road. No, nope, it's just a car. So anyway, yeah, so this is it. Uh, it was... I'm not even going to talk about the brakes that aren't on here. <laughs> you know that? Because I'm 
pretty sure, and I, I know that I'm not crazy or anything, but when I bought it, I, I was pretty certain that I had said I wanted brakes on it. But somewhere in translation, it got it got lost. Lost in translation. I didn't I don't have brakes on it. So, I mean it's only twelve bales, it's no big deal. It's not like I'm running twenty-five bales with the on a wagon with no brakes because I do that all the time uh, but 12 bales with a lot of tongue weight it should just plow right through it just pull it and be able to stop and I just really wanted brakes for the thing because uh, it would just make sense so but anyway I'm hoping to get this thing in the field it does have turn signals you know the whole the whole enchilada there it's got turn signals and everything replace for replacement operators manuals call those people. It's, it's, this is the company. So if you're interested in one of these things, you can call them too. And uh, that's, it'll work. But I'm hoping that I can get my Power Beyond without having to spend like 50 million dollars because I was told that this Power Beyond thing is extraordinarily expensive. And even today, uh, Adam from Deer Country, he's like, oh, you ain't gonna like the price of that. And I'm like, well, liking the price and, and paying the price are two things. Nobody likes to spend money. If it's 50 cents that I have to spend, I'm not going to be happy about it anyway. But I got a feeling it's going to be a couple thousand. I just got that feeling. Cause it's nothing anymore. It's green paint, you know. You got to pay a couple thousand dollars just to drive around in it. Right, Joe? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook this thing back up. And Mr. Joseph is going to take it. I don't know. You know what? Take it out there. Uh... I don't know. Where in the hell do we want to put it? What door? Yeah, you can do that. That'd be all right. All right, go ahead. I'll hook you up here, and then we'll do that, and then I'll talk about the.